And what does it come to? This is numerology, y'all. Three. Creative energy. How are you using yours? Everyone has it. You were born with it. You are to use it while you're here. And whether you use it showing love or hate, same energy, same creative energy. It's not a different energy. It doesn't come in any different. It comes from the sun. Rays of vibration. Same energy. You can take electricity and you can cook with it or you can kill yourself. But whatever you use it for, this love or hate, it is the same creative energy. What are you doing with yours? That's the question of today. What are you doing with yours? All right. Let's see what's next. Let's see what's next. I'm going to pull a paper out of this box filled with papers. Just look at all these papers. Just filled, 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 filled with papers. Whoa, here's one all folded up. Let's see how. Oh, one fell out too, so I'm going to use that one too. This is life. Unhurried and unprepared. Woo! Look at that first one. Look at, I just talked about creative energy. And I have got a paper right here. And here's what this paper says. You hate. That's that creative energy. There's no difference. No difference between this energy and love energy. Same energy flowing through you. You hate what shames you. I think is what it says. Let's see. You hate what shames you in yourself. Now let's think about that a moment. You hate what shames you in yourself. Hmm. So, when you're saying a statement like, I hate that, or I hate him, or I hate her, what you're really saying is, I think I said it before I erased it, this is unexplored guilt, rage. Unexplored guilt. So, unexplored guilt. Shames. What are you? Shame. I'm going to come back and do this in a minute. But my question is, what are you guilty of? What do you, you feel you have mm, covered up? That nobody knows, that you feel really, really bad about. What is it? What are you guilty of? What do you feel you have covered up? Could be for 20 years. Could be for 15 minutes. And it's so easy to get rid of. But let's see what shame is. One, I'm not ever going to put four words on the board again and try to misspell them intentionally, Mitzi. That was a lot. One eight. But it was what it was supposed to be. You know, that's what sometimes we think. We think we've got too much on our plate. But who puts it on there? Who puts too much on our plate? We do. Because we think we are a great, 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 and great people. We think we are so special. We think we got it going on. One, eight, one, four, five. What a shame. Let's see. Well, 
We got that six. You remember that six that was down here? That was one of those grateful words. Okay. Nine, four. Thirteen. Wow. A 19. I think I just wrote up here that all this energy comes from the sun. In the tarot deck, the 19 is the sun. So the sun is amplifying the shame in you. Why? Because when the sun shines, when the sun shines, okay, when the sun shines or if you want to go to biblical terms, when the sun shines, what does it do? I'll show you what it does. We're talking about shame. We're talking about unresolved guilt. We're talking about um, rage. What does it do when the sun shines on you? It casts a shadow. It casts a shadow. So the more you want to be in the light, the more you want to have glory shined upon you, the more shadows will be formed around you. Are you ready for them? Can you handle them? Can you take people misunderstanding you, accusing you of things that you don't feel at all, never even thought of, misrepresenting your actions? Can you do it? Can you smile and say, I love you? Thank you. Thank you for showing me my shadow. I can't see it myself. I'm blinded by my own light of specialness. Okay, so the shadow, now we know, everybody knows, you don't even have to have been watching Mode of Cosmic Therapy to know that seven is God's number. And that God is a he, she, it. In them. Okay? Humans were made in the image of them. So there is no gender preference with God. God's number is a seven. So we know that the son's intent is divine. So those things, those things that most hurt us that most hurt us. Do you understand those things that most hurt us? And those people who most hurt us, most, 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 most hurt us, are blessings. Incomparable blessings. Okay, what do we got? 913? Is that right? 1318. <gasps> we got that same thing, that psychological. I hope you guys. Are y'all staying up and writing this stuff down? Because see, I have to erase it. That's life. It goes, comes, goes, comes, goes. P.S.Y. That's that psychological journey I was talking about just a few erasings ago where you have to get right, whatever that means to you, your mother's energy. The relationship that you have with your mother must come sometime in your life on a more even keel. Okay? Not this, not that, not coming way down here, but that's the journey you're going to go through. You need a more even keel. So it's not going to be a straight line, but it's going to be more of this. Okay? Maybe a little bit of this. Maybe a little bit of this. Maybe a little bit of this. Because when we get it on a straight line, that's when we leave the earth. You know, we got it then. We leave the earth. Leave with that same energy too. You know, that energy follows us in every incarnation. Okay, so what do we have now? That shadow that the sun cast, that bright sun. You know why people seek the sun so much? We're to seek the water. But do you know why people love the sun so much? But it can be very, very harmful. But why do we love the sun and we want to sunbathe? You know what we really want? Release. Release, release, release. That's what we want. Okay. 
Now, let me see. Release from what? What do we want release from, Paula? We want released from supposed, supposed. Do you hear me? These are imaginary, but I've got to use it. Here's the word. This is what we want release from. Burdens. What does burdens incorporate? Worry, strife, competing, comparing, striving, envy, jealousy. Did I write comparing? Yeah. And most of all, and all of this, the source of that is this. Gossip. Gossip, gossip, gossip. Gossip is not only I'm talking about somebody or something. I, have, I feel like I must comment. That is what gossip is. You're continually gossiping with yourself. You got a comment. This is what this means. That is what that means. This is what, what do you think that means? What do you think the other means? You don't have a clue what anything means. Why do you even open your mouth? Let's see what burdens are. Two, three, nine, four, five, five, one. Okay, we got an eight. You can believe that. The heart of burdens, the heart of burdens, the heart of all these things I just said, Mitzi, the worry, the strife, the jealousy, the competition, the comparing, am I prettier than her, is she prettier than me? All of that comes from the eight of these burdens which my man's mind is continually on sex. Death and money. These are our, here comes that word again, psychological impetus. This is what drives us. We want to be the sexiest person alive and have the best orgasm there can be on this earth. We want to receive it as well as provide it. And we want the other person that's with us to think we're the only one that can do that. I am the only one. He doesn't want any other person but me. That's a burden. Because it is a lie. If you have a vagina or a penis, you can acquire orgasm. It's the same creative energy. Give me a break. Okay, that's a fact. Nobody does it any better or any worse than anyone else. It's all in your mind. You are accentuating these burdens. The underlying um, impetus to all mankind is laced with death. Though we try to say that we don't think about it, we are consumed with it all the time. And this doesn't necessarily have to be a death, a, literally, a literal death when someone leaves the earth. But we are continually concerned with whether a relationship is going to end, whether our job is going to end, whether we're going to have um, our comforts, whether we're going to get ahead. That's it. Get ahead. I'd like to see you get ahead of death. That would be a new thing, wouldn't it? Impossible. Impossible. And then, of course, the last one of our psychologically driven impetus is money. Money, 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 money. We all want money. We want more money. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? You're going to buy more things, burdens, things on our backs, things are going to weigh us down. I'd like to see Jesus call you to work, walk on water with all these things 
and money and our consumption of wanting to get ahead and our thoughts, our obsessive thoughts with being sexual and abstractive. I wonder how, you know, how soon you dream when he called you. They're heavy, heavy things. Okay, burdens. What was it? Did we finish it? Eight, did we go? 11, 15, 21. Ah, okay, Paula. Let's see what burdens. T the underlying message, the underlying message that is encased in words to a burden. What is it telling you to do? 11, 15, 21. 29 says change directions. Change directions. Give up these burdens. You know, Jesus said you can take his um, yoke upon you. It's very light. Okay, I've written that word lie up here because we are so consumed with lies. Let's see what a lie is. A lie is a 12, a 9, and a 5. So we got a 14, and what if we got 12? Got a 26. Oh! See that 8? See how we are consumed with sex? Do you see that? We're consumed with sex, with the idea of sex, death, money. There it is right there. What's the primary impetus in that is making sure I have a relationship. And what is that? Conflict. That's making sure that I'm going to have conflict in my relationship. Okay, now, that was that one. Now let's see what this one is. Okay, I think this is right on the tail end of that. Never, never, because it says right here, you hate what shames you in yourself. And here's what the next little paper that fell out. Never defend. I'm going to be a little bit smarter this time, Mitzi. Excuse, because I'm going to break them down. Explain. 